Hey, what's up guys? Jay Burton here, and today I'm going to talk about my Feral Druid PvP guide for 7.1. This is the part 1 video. I'll be going over the artifact traits, talents, honor talents, and that's actually about it. It's going to be a lengthy video because there's two builds that I use as a Feral Druid, depending on what I'm versing. A build versus a melee cleave team, and a build versus a non-melee cleave team. It's very important. Uh, so let's, let's just get into it. Now this is on my second account, on my second 110 Druid. I'll explain that in a later video why I'm on a second account. But anyways, so this guy doesn't have a whole lot finished. So this is as far as I got in the uh, tree here. But there's really not that many important things that are like deep in the tree. So starting off, you want to do this little loop here where you come down and loop around. You get two important things. First off, your hardened roots. This is so your bleeds will not break your roots. You're going to be using uh, versus non-melee cleave teams. You're going to be rooting other people quite a bit. And you do not want them to break out of that, like from just some rip or rake. This is a great way to peel up people off of yourself or a healer. Super important ability. And then protection of Ash Remain. This is awesome. 30 second cooldown, swap to bear form, you double your dodge and armor. Anytime you see some type of you know, burst pop from a melee person, boom, go bear form. You're really going to mess them up. Uh, Attuned for Nature is really nice. Increased healing of, of regrowth. We got nerfed recently. Our healing touch got swapped with regrowth, which is lame. Our healing was a little bit overpowered, I'll admit, but still, that's a bummer. Uh, open Wounds is really only good versus melee cleave teams because of my playstyle, but you can still grab it. It's only one point. Now, this is the most important thing right here in the whole entire tree. Increase the damage of your rip by 21%. We are no longer burst class. World of the Draenor is done. We are no longer all about incarnation burst. We are about bleeds. Bleeds, bleeds, bleeds. So this is a big damage increase. Now once you get this, there's uh, two routes you can go. You can go up to get this crappy scent of blood, which you don't need, but then you can go over to Feral Instinct for a 15% damage increase when you're Incarnation or you're Berserking. Now this is a great for some melee cleave teams, and I actually recommend you go to this path first because there's a lot of melee cleave teams out there, a huge amount. But then also down here you can increase the damage of your Ferocious Bite, which we hardly ever use, but you can get Ash Mane's Bite. I really don't like this ability because this requires you to spend some time on a target trying to proc that extra rip. The amount of time it'll take you to proc that rip, your other rips will be timing off of other targets so it's not even worth it. But there's that chance you can proc it on accident while you're on a target and get double rip. So it's not a bad ability but I really think you should go up and then over here to Feral Instinct first and then head down there. Okay and that's just the artifact traits. Let's go over talents really quick. Now first I want to talk about the talents and honor talents for my build versus melee cleaves and then my talents and honor talents versus non melee cleaves. So this is my build for melee cleaves. Still take lunar inspiration just having that moon fire is a great dot. Uh, renewal. This is some odd. I don't really like renewal but versus melee cleaves the games are fast. You either win fast or lose fast. That is their mental attitude. So a big heal, remember use in bear form, a big heal is pretty nice. The third tier, Guardian Affinity, 6% damage reduction, and when you can go bear form and then just spam Frenzy Regeneration. Lots of healing, lots of survivability versus melee comps. And the 60 tier, I don't like Mighty Bash because we're taking Incarnation. We're going to have a lot of stuns from Rake anyways, so they're going to have stun DR. Mass Entanglement's great. If they for some reason aren't focusing you, you can keep both of them off of your healer or whoever they're on with just one ability. Typhoon can be okay too if you can knock them off in sewers or a bridge, but still not important. In the 75 tier, you want to take Incarnation. This is, it's not a very good ability anymore compared to what it used to be, but it does provide the most burst and survivability for a kind of melee cleave setup. So really important ability, definitely need, need to go this. Um, just real quick why it's important. So your rake will stun every time, so you can stun both targets. Quickly get rips going out because your abilities cost less, and you can get more heals going out. So it's, it's a good way to survive that initial melee burst. The 90 tier is still Jagged Wounds. It's just more burst from our dots. And the 100 tier. What's really odd is I go, go Blood Towns because we're going to be using Regrowth a lot to proc Blood Towns. The reason why is while we're, we're using Incarnation, we're going to be getting all these stealth damage bonus from our attacks. So more damage from Blood Towns is great huge burst. That's what we need. If you can force a melee cleave team 
to lay off of their burst and play more defensive, you're in a very good position. Very good. Now, the other two talents you can use. Brutal Slash is great, too. You're going to hit both the melee targets for a lot of damage. Moment of Clarity is not too bad, because you're going to be getting more melee spenders. So ideally, if this procs while you're in inter Incarnation, you get free attacks that are doing extra damage, because you know, you're, you're technically stealthed. I still prefer Blood Talents, though. It also couples well with one of the honor talents we'll go over in a second. So as you, as you can see, I'm only level 8 on this guy. I haven't been 110 for a while, maybe a week on, on this druid. Um, my other account, he's, of course he's maxed out, but anyways, there's not a whole lot of abilities that I use outside of the first little tier here. Uh, so once again, this is melee cleave setup. Gladiator's Medallion, mandatory. If you get caught in a full 5 second stun or 6 second stun in cat form with no defensives, you're dead. Absolutely dead. Or your healer's going to have to come out in the open and pop all of their cooldowns to keep you alive, which still puts you in a bad position. You have no room for adaptation or relentless versus melee cleaves. In the third or second tier, you want sparring. Absolutely mandatory also. 20% right, chance to make their attacks do 50% less damage. That's amazing. Now in the third tier, Protector of the Grove used to be pretty good. Used to be. Back when we had Healing Touch instead of Regrowth. So now that it's regrowth, this is a terrible, terrible ability. Leader of the pack is okay, but we won't be using Shred a whole lot. A decent bit, while we're in Incarnation. But Shape Mender is still so good. You're going to be swapping Bear Form quite a bit. And whenever you do, you're going to heal 5% of your maximum health in Bear Form. Remember, you get a big health bonus in Bear Form, so big heal. Every 5 seconds you can get a benefit from this, so it's not bad. Uh, the third tier for, for the melee cleave, I actually would take Primal Vitality. This talent looks like it's terrible at first, but when you're thinking about these short games of a lot of burst, that's really important. So what's going to happen is, at the start of the game, you're going to stealth. So you're. So what's going to happen at the, at the start of the game? You're going to use your regrowth to get your blood talents buff up. Remember blood talents, right here. It makes your next two abilities do 50% more damage. So you're going to have that buff up and you're going to enter stealth. So now your next regrowth will also be instant cast. So you open up on somebody with your rake for the stun and then your ash remains uh, frenzy. So that'll use both the charges of your blood talons. Now you can go ahead and use your uh, regrowth. Lose my train of thought. You use that free regrowth from Primal Vitality. You have two more charges of blood talons. You can get a nice big rake, or not rake, a uh, rip, or whatever. It's just the ability to keep getting the Blood Talons buff refreshed is important. Because remember, you can also use Prowl while you're bursting in Incarnation, so you can proc it again. There's so many ways to keep the Blood Talons buff going through your Incarnation buff, or through your Incarnation cooldown. It's insane. So Prime of Vitality is really good. Otherwise, oh, well, I'll talk about the other talent build here in a second. Now, the third tier, King of the Jungle is the only good one. Pri or blood Trauma is good if you're running with like a Windwalker Monk and there's a lot of stuns. But normally, King of the Jungle. 12% damage increase and movement speed increase for having rip out on everybody. Really good. And the third tier, uh, Savage Momentum is pretty much my go-to ability. Even if you're versing a melee cleave and there's only one person you can interrupt and that's the healer, it's still important. Uh, Fresh Wound is okay. You can open up on somebody and it's pretty much a guaranteed crit. So it's two combo points you're getting. I mean, it's not really all that good. And Rip and Tear is pretty terrible. A one minute cooldown to apply uh, Rake and Rip. Meh. Savage Momentum is the way to go. Alright, so that is the build for reversing melee cleaves. Now the second one though, this is versus non-melee cleaves. So what we do... Well, I can't change anything there. Okay, so here's what I use versus non-melee cleaves. So still Lunar Inspiration. But now we're not really so worried on that burst heals. We can actually take Wild Charge, so we can quickly move around to people to get our uh, rakes and rips out. Um, these two right here can swap out. If I'm bursting a dot comp, some some type of rot comp setup of you know Shadow Priest Lock or whatever. Sometimes it's nice to have that extra heal on yourself, and you can do that big Swift Mend heal on a teammate. Pretty nice. Uh, otherwise, Guardian Affinity. Affinity. Then again. If I'm versing a Affliction Lock and I get four unstable Afflictions thrown on me, or, or more, it's nice to be able to go to Bear Form and just pop Frenzy Regeneration 
it, it depends what both the the enemy players are. That's it's a tough one. And the 60 tier, I will take Mighty Bash because we're not using Incarnation, so we don't have a lot of stuns from Rake. So Mighty Bash does have its place. Now, Soul of Force is something I usually never really played. Uh, I started using Savage Roar, but I decided I like Soul of the Forest because we want to maintain three rips at all times to really, well, first off, get most of our damage output out, because that's where it all comes from, rip. But also, we're using King of the Jungle, so we want to have three rips out at all times. So Soul of the Forest really helps you, it gives you basically two free combo attacks. So when you rip somebody and you swap targets, you can already get combo points generating and work on getting that rip. So this is a very good ability. You could take Savage Roar if you're running a comp where you only need two rips out. Like, if you're running with a mage and somebody's getting polymorphed, you obviously won't be ripping them. So you can use Savage Roar to, in place of that third rip, so you can still kind of keep an extra damage bonus going out. Jagged Wounds. That's... <laughs> I don't like this ability for keeping three rips out because it makes it harder, since, you know, they, they kind of last longer, or don't last as long, but it's such a good ability though, big damage increase. And then, in this tier I'd either go Brutal Slash or Moment of Clarity, usually I'll take Brutal Slash though, just a little bit on demand burst, I like to save up all three charges and then go for a kill when somebody's at like 30% health. That's it for the towns. Now once again, just a reminder, this is non-Melee Cleave setup for me. Now I would normally take Adaptation, and then reinforced health. Unless they do have like a monk or something, some type of powerful melee uh, character, then I will, I could take sparring. Still take shape member or shape mender. Pouncing strikes or freedom of the herd. This one's still not bad, uh, especially if you're versing like a mage. You want to try try to help keep your healer away from that polymorph. This can be helpful, but pretty situational. Pouncing strikes also helps you get the rip out. Not not much running around. Still King of the Jungle and Savage Momentum. Usually you're going to be versing multiple casters if it's not a melee cleave, so Savage Momentum is a huge, huge help. Okay guys, so that's that's the differences in my uh, melee cleave setup and my non-melee cleave setup. Let's see here. I think that's all I want to talk about in that. Uh, just really quick, uh, let me go over the role uh, in case people are really new to Feral Druid. Your overall role in arenas is to keep out your bleeds on everybody. You're kind of a rot setup now. You're, you're like an affliction lock or whatever you want to think about it. Rake and Rip and Moonfire. These three abilities need to be up on targets at all times. And then in between that, you're going to be in spinning combo points and getting a free instant cast spell. You either want to use it on regrowth to keep somebody alive or roots to keep somebody off of you or your teammates or to keep somebody out in the open where they can get you know interrupted and such. And that's pretty much it. That's your that's your role. It's very simple. Uh, you do have to learn how to survive, though. You need to take advantage of all your shape shifting. Even travel form is useful in arenas. So you just got to know when to go bear form. And that's about it. I don't, don't know what else to say. So my next video will be overall rotations, and that's going to be a lengthy video too. I'm going to be going over how to open up versus melee cleaves. You know, how to survive versus them, and how to open up versus non-melee cleaves, team, or melee cleaves, and just keeping up rakes and rips up on everybody. Alright guys, thank you for watching.